and welcome to the floor of the EEPROM 9. Today's teardown is the COSOR Transponder SSR Transponder and then we have model numbers and service some sort of other numbers written all over it. Yeah, this is the transmitter section of a tr aircraft transponder. There's where it plugs in. They all seem to be sort of rack mounts. I've noticed this. Aircraft stuff always seems to be racked. Now, some of you may be getting a bit of deja vu on transponder teardown. That's because you'll be remembering this. The actual cockpit unit that the pilots would enter a particular code for what their transponder will continually ping out or ping out when it's requested transponder information but of course this unit is well who's this unit? this unit is Plesley this unit is COSOR but I can only assume COSOR is also a UK company because there's loads of Plesley parts in it such as chips and capacitors However, this is not the subject of teardown. If you want that, there's always a bit. There's a video somewhere. I'd suggest looking at the teardown playlists because I think it was one I did a while back. So, shall we get this sucker open? Well, first let's show you around. We have the actual transmission line where you get some nice coax or cable to lead to the aerial, maybe some aerial filtration RF goodness. We also have a suppression port which I'm guessing you put a signal into that and it basically shuts off this unit in a sort of sense. That'd be my guess by what it's called. Round the sides and front and that we have absolutely jack shit. At the back we have some sort of locking hole, the screw that takes off the case and of course the interface port which would link to the cockpit unit and maybe an interme intermediate section but I'm not 100% sure whether there is an intermediate section I would imagine the aircraft computer would monitor this and you'll probably also find that the aircraft computer would exist in the period this was made, the 1970s and this is the very much favourite that Plesley love, the good old... This needs a bit of yanking, and there we go, we have it open. Good old sort of rotary sort of clip screw. Seems very popular on aircraft equipment, if you ask me. Especially Plesley stuff. So we're greeted with a whole load of RF. Evil! Nah, it's not really evil, it's just RF electronics. So, let's start by pointing out basic units. On the top, we have a PCB, which I'd imagine would be more on the RF sort of side, as it's covered in some rather interesting little chips, as well as a variety of transistors and canned ICs, although it's hard to tell what the... this is a canned IC, I can confirm that. I haven't actually looked at any of the part numbers, that was something I meant to do earlier. Here we have the bottom PCB, which I reckon is more the digital circuit that converts the... hang on... <coughs> there we go. That converts the actual code into an analog ping that can be pinged out, basically. And then, of course, this PCB up the top here will actually start converting it to RF, and then it goes down into the intermediary stages here. Now, because I'm not an RF expert, I can't go into detail on how these sections work, but we can show you inside and give you a rough overview of what they do. In the back, we have an EHT unit. That's this little box here. We'll give you a closer look at that. This thing has absolutely no connections to it whatsoever but it does have the EHT in some like almost like weird like dog slobber wax like stuff which is I think healable potting compound that goes up there into there soldered round to this cable which goes into the 
I believe this is the transmitter osculator. This giant cylindrical thing is the transmitter osculator. Here we have the radio frequency osculator. That's what's labelled on this and I'd imagine this whole unit is to do with it. For, so in other words we've got two osculators, we've got one which controls the transmitter unit and one which controls the um, actual radio frequency. I'm not exactly sure to the physics of why this is the case and why it's designed like this. Because I barely understand radio electronics in the simple stuff, let alone full blown RF. So. Shall we start showing you under some panels? I think so. So, after removing some panels from the RF os radio, s or radio frequency osculator, we have the RF things. Now here we have a strange little curly-whirly snake-like trace. I don't know what the hell that's all about. Probably something to do with capacitance or inductance. These six transistor light devices are actually Plesley RF chips. I haven't looked up the part numbers on any of these, sorry. And of course the second module up here, we've even got this little glass thing, which hang on, let me take off camera to give it a detailed look. I do not know what that is, there's just this little glass bulb thing with a black thing inside. And of course we've got four tuning caps and one down there. And looks like another RF IC, all conformal coated here. It's weird, parts of this is actually conformal coated. If we go to the top, this is another cover that was here. Was well, on this RF section, we got instead of a circle trace, we've got a square one going round. Variable capacitor, a crystal, a transistor and this strange little cylindrical thing here. I mean, you know, I only expect to see strange cylindrical things in car engine bays, not electronics. And of course, we've also got this board's conformal coated. This one and this one are not conformal coated. And of course, we've got some glass diodes under here. So, let's show you the HV section. I'm not sure how well the light levels will show up on here, but we'll do our best because I'm limited on light levels, I'm afraid. This is our HV inverter, our flyback transformer, if you will. We've got three outputs with ceramic spacers, one, two, three, and this one's rather sooted with arcing. So we instantly know why this thing was decommissioned. That little piggy decided to arc where it to where to it should not have. Not great, but other than that, there's no real damage. There's a whole ton of power transistors back there. Also, both sides have their own gold-plated power transistor, which will no doubt be to do with this particular unit. But this will be a completely sealed and potted unit. For instance, look at the amount of input pins. This is an e entirely separate unit that could be replaced. I'd love to get these RF units open, but the problem is, is you need to literally tear apart the whole thing. So I'm afraid we can't actually get inside some of these units. So they will always hold their mystery, at least until my curiosity gets the better of me. We've got a whole load of power transistors at the back. This seems to be nothing more than an insulation block. I can see no evidence anywhere that this actually electrically connects to anything. It's purely there for insulation between this and this. Well, you don't want this arcing to this. The results could be quite bad. You want the HV to go where it's supposed to go. And the HV goes all the way up this wire. Actually goes to three places down this brown wire into the uh, transmitter osculator. I believe that's what it is. Um, yes, I remembered correctly. <laughs> yep, I have to read it. That's how well I remember. In fact, they're all connected together. There's actually two of these coming through. I'm not 
not 100% sure where they all go. Like, they might just isolate together as sort of grounding points and that that they go to, but that kind of jazz. Yeah, let's show you inside the front before we run out of time. Under the front cover, we then have two modules, as well as the actual unit lovely um, coaxial things that go to it. We have the main transmitter beam, which also splits off to two places, here and here. Now this is a type of, uh, what does it say it is? It's a, basically monitors the signal, sort of monitoring point where it can just check it's outputting the right thing basically. And this mysterious black box with a button thing on that isn't actually a button, that is unknown. But there's the monitor thing right back there. And of course the suppression thing only has a normal spindly wire. So, that's inside an aircraft transponder. And the EEPROM 9 has a very good use for it. Problem solved! Thanks for watching.